Hey everyone! So in honor of Thanksgiving, we're going to do a little bit of a combo video of two of my loves. Reptiles, obviously, and joining me is Shoshone, and I'll tell you exactly why that is in a second, and history. So we're going to give a little lesson kind of about, not necessarily the, in all honesty, whitewashed version of history that we're all taught in the, you know, elementary school about the holiday, but we're going to talk a little bit about the history of snakes in early America, so i.e. the 13 colonies, as well as several Native American cultures, because, you know, that's what we all learn is, you know, the pilgrims and the Indians getting together and having a great harvest. But whatever, we're not going to talk about that exactly. So we're going to talk a little bit about the history of snakes, because it turns out snakes have been kind of a pivotal symbol for America since the beginning, and she has me handcuffed. Anyway, so... Mostly the snake that in reference to what I'm going to talk about is actually the timber rattlesnake and seeing as how that is illegal and I don't ever want to keep venomous snakes, we're going to show a snake that is here in that they would have seen during that time and that is the northern pine snake. So Shoshone here. Hi. So we've all, you know, there, there are some different symbols throughout American history that do show the snake. Several of them are very famous and I'm going to talk about them right now. So, in we're just going to start at the beginning. So, in 1751, you know, the colonies are existing, some of the pivotal players are already there, and Benjamin Franklin, who everybody knows, who wasn't a president, just so everybody knows, wasn't a president. Uh, he was already an author, an inventor, all these really, uh, really, really cool, th crazy things like, you know, the Renaissance man of the 17th of the 1700s. And Britain was already in the habit of starting to kind of mess with the colonies a little bit, including sending convicted criminals to the colonies. So they didn't just send them to Australia. They also sent them to the colonies a lot, mostly Georgia for whatever reason. But they sent convicted criminals, usually some of the more violent offenders, to the colonies. Not just people who stole handkerchiefs, because evidently that was a thing that happened a lot. And so Benjamin Franklin thought that in return we should start sending rattlesnakes back to Great Britain to people in Parliament. As, you know, well, you give us your criminals, we're going to give you a rattlesnake. And I, oh, there she is. She's hanging out there. So... That was the first time that rattlesnakes were mentioned by Benjamin Franklin. The next time, or at least the most famous time after that, was in 1754 during the French Indian War. That was when he made the very first political cartoon in America, which is now very famous, and that is the eight-sectioned woodcutting of a rattlesnake that, with the uh, words underneath, join or die. So what that was, it was the rattlesnake cut into eight sections with each section representing a colony at the uh, geographically up and down the coast from the tail being the lowest colony all the way up to the top. The top few colonies were broke were just called New England. That's why there's only eight sections. But it was essentially the first political cartoon where they talked about kind of the colonies themselves being their own separate thing really as they were already starting to have quite a few difficulties with Britain and you know their control and taxation and everything like that. So after that, we're going to start getting into something that brings about a very famous flag. So in 1775, during, like right before the Revolutionary War kicked off, there were a lot of newspapers and things like that. And Benjamin Franklin, who was a really famous essayist, was very talented, and she got my hair all over the place, in the Pennsylvania Journal, which was one of the more popular magazines or newspapers at the time, he wrote an essay talking about how the rattlesnake, specifically the timber rattlesnake, so the one that's you know would be indigenous to the colonies, would represent a really good symbol for the United States, as well as further along the way, the bald eagle and the American Indian, which that didn't really go very well in the end. But, so, that was essentially him saying that this rattlesnake that is only a danger when threatened. It's coiled up, it's ready to strike, but what it's essentially saying is, leave me alone, you don't want to mess with me. And he thought that was a very good symbol to represent America. And so during this time, an, an American general named Christopher Gadsden designed a flag based on this suggestion. 
And so what that was now is we recognize as the Gadsden's flag. So that is that yellow banner with the coiled up rattlesnake with the words, don't tread on me underneath. So it was very first seen, and I'm going to talk the whole history about this. So it was very first seen. It was the, essentially the first naval flag of the United States. It was flown on the flagship of the first U.S. Navy under Commodore Essex Hodgkins, who flew it as the flagship under the first U.S. Navy. Even when the first Marines signed up, once they saw this flag and they had seen, you know, that Benjamin Franklin had supported this and things like that, they signed up. They marched through the streets of Pennsylvania after signing up, getting ready to go to war for independence with yellow painted drums with a coiled up rattlesnake on the drum with 13 rattles with the words, don't tread on me. And that was the first time that those words were used with the, was don't tread on me was during that. When the very first Marines of America marched through the streets banging drums with a rattlesnake on their drums and don't tread on me. So this flag was then officially adopted by the U.S. War Office in 1778 and became one of the first flags to be used by America. It was, you know, it was essentially the biggest and most important flag until it was eventually replaced by the Stars and Stripes, but it is still used all throughout today as a symbol of, you know, an oppressive government, standing up for civil rights, disagreement with government, and oppression. So, theoretically, whenever you see one of those flags flying, you should be thinking that someone who stands up for civil liberties and rights, but has kind of been perverted a little bit over the years. But that's all I'm really going to talk about, about the European colonizing or the pilgrim side. The next part I'm going to talk about the Native American part. So, while the, the snake, specifically the rattlesnake, had a pretty good start with American culture, and then somehow they became villains again, uh, turns out, unfortunately, through my research, that a lot of Native American cultures don't necessarily treat the snake with reverence at all. In fact, they're usually seen as, I mean, essentially creatures that you don't want to trifle with. So they were seen as beings of great power, of vengeance, of just kind of this kind of dark entity that, you know, I'm, I'm aware I'm not, I'm essentially I'm generalizing. I'm not specifically calling out individual things, individual tribes, beliefs. This is just kind of a generalized statement that they were essentially beings of great power that you didn't want to be, to, that you did not want to mess with. They represent, they were symbols of rebirth and immortality and rejuvenation, as well as vengeance and violence and retribution. Uh, they were often seen in some Native American tribes as depicting fighting thunderbirds, 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 which were creatures of great reverence and power. So if they're fighting and being at odds, it's not necessarily something that they really are, you know, honoring necessarily. Um, most Native American cultures do find them what we would probably consider a little bit superstitious. Uh, in fact, there was even a, a small zoo in the Navajo Nation that had a king snake on display, and they were actually asked the king snake to be removed uh, as they thought it would contribute or add to the, in all honesty, physical illness of people visiting the zoo and the people who lived on the land. So, Every single culture is a little weird about snakes, and that's what I've discovered. Not everybody likes them. Everybody has a weird hang-up about them. Um, although the Hopi Indian tribe in the natives in the Southwest does actually do a snake dance that is a really cool thing. It symbolizes a great time of rebirth, of growth, of, of crops, and everything like that. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was actually the first westerner to view and witness to be invited to watch the Hopi snake dance. So there we go. Just a quick little history lesson that involves snakes in what, you know, a little bit of a mashup. I thought this was a pretty good idea because I like to talk about history too, but a little bit of kind of background about how snakes have really just been involved in American society since the beginning, as well as they do hold a place with, you know, the Native American cultures, which is the other parallel of the Thanksgiving story. So hopefully you guys learned something from this 
enjoyed it. At least got to sit there and stare at her acting all fun. She's being very, very cooperative today because I kind of woke her up. I'm not going to lie, guys. But hopefully you enjoyed the story. Hopefully you guys had a safe, happy holiday. If you can, you know, please like and subscribe for more reptile content, not necessarily just history content. If you guys seem to like that, maybe I'll try to do it more often. Um, let me know if you guys like anything down below. If you want to see something else, still thinking about trying some longer format forums like podcast type things. If that's something that you'd like to see, please let me know down in the comments. Hit me up Facebook, Instagram, Jay-Z's Reptiles at gmail.com. Hope you're having a safe and happy holiday again. We'll check you next time. Hey, everybody. Really quick, just want to talk a little bit about maybe helping support Jay-Z's Reptiles a little bit. And you can do that even by kind of getting something for yourself too, which is merchandise. So hopefully for this, you know, coming up this Black Friday, not really a sale, but it'll be made available then. We're going to have a few different designs of different things and I'm going to show you really quick. First of all, you know, the shirt that I'm wearing, really happy about this design. It's going to come in a variety of different colors in both unisex and women's. So there's another one just for, you know, shows and tellsies. We have purple, teal, black, gray, a couple different colors. It's going to be really cool. The other one is obviously the standard logo, the Jay-Z's Reptiles logo. So here's another t-shirt. Just nice, simple, keep it sweet, easy, but looks really good, I think, as well as we also have bandanas with Jay-Z's Reptiles. We have masks in limited quantities available as well. So all of these ones, all of the t-shirts, I will have different sizes in unisex women's, even a few youth tees. But, you know, just please let me know. Hit me up, jayzsreptiles at gmail.com if you're interested. We also have stickers in full color. You know, so we have these guys that we've had. This is the full color one that I know everything is usually black and white for those because printing t-shirts is kind of expensive, everybody. We also have another really cool brand new design for stickers that are going to be coming out. You can see it right here. So... Every one of these things is made, every one of the designs has been designed by a local artist here in Denver. So it kind of helps support local artists. The shirts are printed at a local print shop. So that helps, you know, local print shop, local business, as well as, hey, I'm local too. You support small business locals. Yay. So hopefully you, uh, you know, are interested. Hit me up, jayzsreptiles.gmail.com. Catch you next time.